I think it's four o'clock, Mary. I think we can begin. We can begin. OK, good afternoon, year six parents. This is Mr Ian Plantier. I'm the head of secondary at GEMS Founders School. And it is an absolute pleasure to put on this webinar this afternoon for you all um, in this very surreal time, um, in this very unprecedented time. Now, obviously, this webinar is going out to all year six parents and we're going to record this um, so that it can be shared. So I'm hoping that although I'm speaking to a blank screen right now, I'm hoping that we do have people watching this um, and enjoying this and learning from it, but it will be shared, like I said, um, with all year six parents tomorrow for your review. I want to start off by wishing all of your families, you and your families, wherever you are in the world currently, um, all the very best. I hope that you're all safe and well and that you continue to keep safe and well through this very challenging time. Um, I also extend um, this message from the senior leadership team and all of the community at GEMS Founders School to you. Um, and we, we certainly pass on our best wishes um, from the very bottom of our hearts. So this afternoon, what we're going to talk to you about is very much what we would talk to you about normally in school. And that is the journey your children are making from the primary school to the secondary school. It's a very, very important uh, challenge. Um, and obviously it's created an even bigger challenge under the current circumstances. But obviously we aim to make sure that your transition, your child transition is as smooth as possible um, as they move from year six to seven. So if Mary, you could just move on the slide, please. Thank you. So, with all of the sessions that we, we do at GEMS Founder School, we always like to begin with um, a really important message, and that is in line with our vision. Um, this will have been shared with you on numerous occasions, and I'm sure that you'll be familiar with these three very important words to our school and our school community, um, grow, flourish and succeed. And we truly want to talk about each of these words and what they mean throughout this session um, in the context of year six moving into year seven, but also as year sevens grow into year eight, nine, so on and so forth, and leave our school at the end of year 13 and go off to higher education and eventually the world of work. So although this is a primary to secondary transition um, webinar this afternoon, please continue to think big as our students continue to grow, to flourish and succeed through the secondary school here at GFS. Next slide, please, Mary. So this is the, the structure, um, the very sort of general structure um, of our team. And obviously there's, there's far more members of our team than just the four, that, four of us that you can see on the current slide. But essentially, like I said, my name is Mr Ian Plant, if you don't know me already, and I am the head of the secondary school here. Um, alongside me um, on the slide is Ms Gerpreet Dalliwell, who is our deputy, deputy head of secondary. And then the two um, ladies below, Ms Hannah Monk, is our head of Key Stage 3, and I do extend um, her apologies. She cannot be with us this afternoon, unfortunately. Um, she is um, a little bit sick and unwell, so I do, do pass on those apologies um, from her to you. But she actually looks after uh, Key Stage 3. And again, I like to explain what Key Stage 3 means. Key Stage 3 essentially is all of our students in years 7, 8 and 9 put together. Key Stage 4 is therefore year 10 and 11. Key stage five is year 12 and 13. And it's a phrase, a term that I'd like you to become familiar with um, as we will refer to this uh, throughout the next year and beyond. And then we have Miss Gabby Pippard, who is our current year um, head of year 11, who actually will be going all the way back and starting with our new year seven students, your children in the, uh, in the next academic year. And once I finish speaking today, I'll be handing over to Miss Gabby, um, who will be coming live to talk about um, lots of the things related to year seven next year. You could move on to the next slide, Mary. Thank you. So what I'd like to start to begin with um, is, is to discuss the curriculum. 
Um, and obviously our school is, is a big school, um, over 4,000 students. And as the children progress through the different year groups and through the different key stages, obviously you need to be more aware of the curriculum and the background of the curriculum moving forward. Essentially, we have the what is called the National Curriculum um, of England. And this is a document um, for all subjects that has been put together. Um, it's in place and has been in place for many years now, um, which is a document that specifies essentially all of the content that children are expected to learn in year seven, year eight, year nine. And that is the curriculum that, that we follow. Now, obviously, being an international private school, we have the autonomy to obviously follow that um, curriculum, but to actually adapt it along the way to help meet the needs of all of our students um, who come obviously from different parts of the world. So we must try to put that into context um, throughout this session this afternoon. The national curriculum, we will share the, uh, the web link to the, the website, um, which is essentially the, the government in the UK's website. Um, it is a massive, massive document for you to read through at your leisure, should you wish. Um, essentially, like I said, outlining what children will be expected to know um, and, and to understand at the end of each year and end of each key stage across all of the key subjects, of course. We then obviously have the Ministry of Education subjects, um, including Arabic and Islamic um, and uh, UAE social studies. And as students progress through year seven, eight and nine, they must follow the guidance given to us by the Ministry of Education here in Dubai in the UAE, um, having a certain number of hours, a certain number of lessons a week of Arabic and Islamic. Um, that's obviously for our Arab students and our non-Arab students, and of course our Muslim students. And we follow that very closely um, and comply with all of their expectations just like your child has been doing in year six so far. Moral education is becoming an increasingly very important subject, um, not just at our school, but across this country. Um, and moral education is based upon different pillars, um, different morals, different values, um, which uh, students look at and they learn. Um, and it's actually going beyond just learning about different morals and values. It's actually how students interact with the wider community, the school community, but the wider community, um, so that they're displaying these values in society um, and beyond, of course. So a very, very important subject that we will um, be teaching your children. They've already been taught it this year, of course, but it builds year upon year um, as students get older and older. And then as students move um, out of key stage three, so into year 10 um, and join key stage four, our program of study, our, our curriculum at this school, we follow the IGCSE um, curricula. Now, this is where lots of uh, year seven parents will have lots of different questions. And it's always the case at this time of year um, about what IGCSE looks like, um, what it means, what it stands for, what we offer. And what I can say is that we're really confident that our IGCC curriculum and provision has grown over the past uh, three years um, significantly since we set it all up um, and, and have students going through the system. Um, but what I want to explain in brief today to you is that we work with three different examination boards currently, um, or will do next year, sorry. Um, Cambridge International, um, is one of our examination boards, Oxford AQA, and then we're going to introduce Pearson Edexcel, and you can see their three logos at the bottom of this slide. Um, we made a really conscious decision about our examination boards when we first set up this program, um, because we believe these are the examination boards and these are the specifications that will best meet the needs of our students, who obviously are international students. I won't go into this in too much detail because it's obviously three years away from now, but it's certainly something that students in year seven should be looking forward to. Um, and by the time that your child reaches that year and that stage in their education, obviously the school will have a very, very comprehensive set of information, examination results um, to, to show you, to publish, um, so that it increases your confidence 
in what we're doing as children get older at Jones Founders School. And it's obviously a very exciting um, summer for our current year 11 students and our current year 13 students, because essentially this is our first cohort of big numbers of students, 126 students in year 11 who are going to get IGCC qualifications this summer, albeit in very, very different circumstances um, with the cancellation of examinations um, and a, a situation where we've, we as a school have actually been fully accountable for calculating their grades and submitting, submitting them to the examination boards. And I absolutely hope that by the time your child reaches uh, year 10 and 11, obviously that um, things have returned completely back to normal um, in terms of our educational processes at that age group. And then finally, um, A-levels. Um, so that is for students in years 12 and 13. Once they've completed their IGCSEs, uh, they've got their qualifications, we then start to narrow the curriculum where they start to focus in on three or four different subjects um, that will obviously lead into to university and to the degrees that they will go on and study. And hopefully we'll give them that really good foundation, that platform for success later in life. So this slide, like I said, moving from key stage three, where year seven start, your children begin all the way into key stage four, and then the output is at key stage five. We could please move on, Mary, to the next slide. So this slide is a, is a broad overview of how we assess children in the secondary school. I've tried to keep it as simple as possible um, so that I can just talk through each of the layers, which, as you can probably see, replicate themselves and lean slightly to the right. So we looked at assessment and we've been looking at assessment thoroughly over the past three years. To one, really try to help students understand this in more detail um, and obviously help parents understand it as well. So what you can see in front of you is a model that we, we designed three years ago. Um, we believe it's a, a successful model. Our students are starting to get to grips with this. Our parents are really starting to get to grips with it and starting to understand um, the journey that students go on in year seven, eight and nine. And I'm going to talk through each of the, the four, um, well, there's nine blocks, but each of the four categories within those nine blocks. So you can see for year seven, there are nine different building blocks um, as they move through this very important and transitional year. The first of um, them is uh, the E block, which is reference to emerging. Then they move into D, which is developing, S, secure, and M, mastery. And like I said, that replicates itself in year eight and nine as well. Now, as your children leave year six, we have an absolute wealth of information, assessment information about your child um, that has currently been handed over to me and that we're currently looking at and analyzing to make sure that we know exactly where your child has ended the year, um, ended the year six. And obviously this has been a very different end to year six through uh, remote learning, which we will obviously factor in. But looking at that progress your child has made to see which one of these blocks in year seven your child will begin on. And it doesn't necessarily mean that your child will start on E1. Um, because in year seven, when you when the children come back into school, um, whether that be in, in school physically or whether we have to continue remote learning, um, and I'll, I'll go on to talk a little bit about that in a second, um, we will be assessing children at the start of year seven, what's called baseline assessments. Um, they will be doing their CAP4, their cognitive ability test, which I'm sure um, many, of you, many of the parents should be aware of now. Um, and again, I'll talk a little bit about what CAP4 um, provides and helps us as, as teachers and helps students as students and helps parents as parents. But when we get that baseline information in year seven, your child will have a starting point on one of these nine blocks. And each progress check, we have what are called progress checks in the secondary school, we will be monitoring your child against that start point right the way until the end of the year. Obviously, the ultimate goal for every child, the ultimate goal would be to, to master that content in year seven in every subject. And obviously go beyond that. Um, 
you will have seen a lot of our communication that talks about high performance learning. And what high performance learning really emphasizes is that actually when we assess children, there are no limits, there are no boundaries. And we strongly believe through this model that we're going to incorporate next year, that children, all children have the capacity to reach that very, very top level um, of assessment in every single year group, in every single subject. Um, and to really, to really unleash their potential in everything that they do. Now, of course, we have to be realistic and realists about this. And we know that not every child in year seven is going to reach a, a, a level M2, a mastery level two at the end of year seven. They might not get there at the end of year seven. It might take them another year or another two years or another three years. Um, but what I want you to understand as year six parents going into year seven, um, and obviously the students to understand, is that we really expect them to put in absolute, all of the effort that they possibly can do to give it their best um, and to understand, to have that mindset that they can achieve anything they really want to um, if they give it their best efforts and they're really focused in their studies. So that gives you a little bit of a broad overview of year seven and 89 assessment. I've not put uh, year 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 on here purposely because it, it does get a little bit more complicated uh, depending on what subjects students choose in year 10, which examination board is associated with those subjects. And that will come when you as parents re reach and your students reach, uh, reach the end of year nine. I do want to say the way we do um, assess children um, is very comprehensive. And I'm gonna talk about three things uh, on this next slide, Mary, please, if you could just move forward. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about what we call the data triangle. Uh, the data triangle obviously has three sides and each of these three sides has three words, three keywords associated to assessment that we believe if we join this triangle together, join the dots together and students interact and parents interact with these three sides of this triangle um, comprehensively, we will get the very best out of our children. So if you can just go on to the first side of the triangle please. All of these three sides begin with the letter A to keep it hopefully straightforward for you. The first one is attainment. Attainment is a very important word in assessment in education um, through primary, secondary and, and higher education of course. Attainment essentially is talking about where a child reaches, what level a child reaches at a certain point in time. So for example, a child at the end of year seven, like I've just talked about, might reach a secure level one. And that would be that would be classified as their attainment level. It might be that they get an A star at GCSE or an A when they get to A levels later um, in their academic life. That would be an example of attainment. And we have so much attainment data available for our current year six students um, to use and that will have been shared with you on the on the reports um, so far this year that we will look at um, before your child enters year seven. So we'll be looking at the progress test data in English, maths and science, the levels they've reached in that, um, the levels of attainment they've reached, the attainment levels they've reached within their, their classes in year six. Um, so obviously you will get an end of year report that actually outlines end of year six attainment. Um, a very, very important part of the triangle, but like I said, it's only one element of the way we assess in the secondary school. If you could please add the next side, please, Mary. We then look at ability or aptitude. Um, this is a really interesting concept in education, and it's something that we need to work together with our students, with our parents to understand more, and to use more. Because cognitive ability, the CAT4 test, the cognitive ability test, is a really, really important indicator of potential. But it factors in only some of the things that we need to find out about children. So they'll do their CAT4 test at the start of the year. It looks at four different test batteries. So how well they think with words, how well they think with numbers, how well they think with shape and space. Um, and so it tests all different types of their brain 
and um, to give us an indication of what their potential, what their academic potential is. Now, this obviously doesn't factor in things like how hard they work or their current situation or um, all of the difficulties that they, they may be facing in their lives. It doesn't factor in any of that. It doesn't factor actually in the teaching um, at all. It's actually raw aptitude and raw ability, um, which actually what we can then do is look at how the attainment, the actual level they reach, compares to what they're potentially capable of achieving. And obviously, our goal as a school is to make sure that all of our students not only reach their potential, but smash through their potential and go on um, and, and to succeed things well above that um, level. Which then brings in the third side of this triangle, which I'm sure you're all guessing what this is. And that is the attitude students demonstrate. This is, for me, arguably the most important side of this triangle, because without attitude, the right attitude to succeed, that, that determination, that resili resilience, that passion to achieve great things at GFS in all of their subjects, um, the other two really um, don't are not that important. They're really not. But when you bring all of these three together, when children work hard, they give their best efforts in everything that they do. They will attain levels that is in line with their potential and beyond. So I want you to think about these three sides um, as we go on to the next slide. Um, and as your child ends year six and obviously starts um, year seven after the summer. Now those three sides of that triangle link to all of these different types of tests um, and assessments that you can see listed below. I want to make it really clear that GEMS Founders School is not a test factory. It is not a place where we love to test children day in, day out. It's not the way we do things. It's not the way we operate because we don't feel it's the right way um, to educate children. However, obviously children do need to be assessed on a day to day basis in class with quizzes, with um, different spelling tests, for example, uh, mental maths tests, uh, mental maths quizzes, but also the day to day interactions we have with children where we just ask questions and we get their feedback um, in, in a class setting. So there's lots of different ways that we gather this information, but what you see on this slide are actual formal national agenda assessments and tests that we are required to comply with in this country. Um, and as you can see, there is quite a lot um, that we are expected to do and adhere to. The one at the top I've talked to you about um, just briefly before, but like I said, at the start of year seven, students will be sat behind a, um, should they be in school, of course, sat behind a, a desk with a computer um, for a, a couple of hours, engaging in the, the cognitive abilities test. That will give us that, that ability, that aptitude data, that we can then start looking at immediately and share with you as parents. As we move through this list, some of these um, assessments are not going to always be relevant to year seven students, but they could be relevant to your child in the future um, as if, if they stay at GFS and if they stay obviously within this country. Now, TIMS is a, is a massive global study, a, a three year um, study that looks at the trends in international maths and science. Now, our students in year seven will not do that. Our students in year eight will not do that. But when they get a little bit older, um, and if it's on that third year cycle, your child may be involved in this. Um, we have conducted our school, the first um, TIMS assessment. Um, the, we were engaged in the TIMS study last year. We're still to receive the results, but once we do, we will um, obviously publish them to our wider community. And what this test does, or what this study indicates, is how well our students in Founders are comparing to Dubai, how they're comparing to the UAE, and how they compare to students around the world. And this is really important that um, you understand, um, especially if you do leave the UAE and actually go to another international school in a different country, or another school in, in um, not necessarily an international school, but any school in any country, because this data does rank uh, countries against one another 
And it's our ambition in this country, the UAE, to obviously compete with those top performing countries around the world, um, such as China, such as uh, in Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, Finland, etc. So TIMS is, is one of those assessments um, that measures that. We then have the PISA, um, the performance of international students, the program for international student assessment, excuse me, and then the PISA based test for schools. Again, it's nothing for your child in year seven to worry about next year, but in the future when they get to year 10 um, and when they when they reach the age of 15, your child may be um, involved in this assessment. Again, it looks at um, English, it looks at maths, it looks at science, it looks at financial literacy um, and actually compares again our country versus different countries around the world. Once again, it's our ambition, it's Sheikh Mohammed's vision our country to be in the top 15 and 20 highest performing countries globally um, actually by the year 2021. The next set of assessments um, or tests, progress tests, English, maths and science uh, your children will be involved in. Now they would normally be involved in this right now as we speak but obviously we can't be involved in that because uh, these tests must be administered in school um, and it is the intention that these tests will be administered twice next year. Um, and we'll be releasing a lot more information about that as and when we uh, as and when we receive it. But essentially your child in year seven will be involved in the English and mathematics progress tests. You'll notice that in year seven students do not do a progress test in science. And there's very good reasons behind that. that I will share with you um, on, on a separate document and I don't need to really go into in this forum. So your child will be engaged in the year six, sorry Mary, if you could just go back at the year six progress test at the start of year seven, and they'll be involved in the year seven progress test at the end of year seven. Um, and obviously that is a, a consequence of the, uh, the pandemic that we're facing, um, and obviously the remote learning period that we're going through, things have a knock on effect. Could you just go back a slide, Mary, please? Thank you. So the last two um, pieces of information on this slide are PASS and NGRT. I'll start with NGRT because it should be something that um, you would be familiar with, perhaps, because uh, for this year and this year only, hopefully, students have actually been engaged with the, the new group reading test from home. Um, and we have received all of that information and, and are currently processing all that information. But what that looks at um, is students' ability to, to comprehend text um, and to complete sentences. Um, it's an online test. We have that data, we'll be using it year on year, and it indicates the reading age of your child. And again, that's a very important indication of how well your child will perform um, in English, um, in literacy lessons, and then later on down the line in English language and literature, GCC and A-levels, should they um, follow them. Finally, PASS and the pupil, pupil attitude to self and school. So that fits into that bottom area of the triangle, that one about the attitude. And this looks at um, students' feelings towards school, students' feelings towards their homework or their home learning, should I say. Uh, students' attitudes to their teachers, to the curriculum demands, a really important set of data that we need to look at because the reality is, is that when children come to school, they all come to school with different attitudes every day. And you know that as parents, I know that as a parent, and when children wake up, they will have different approaches on every single day. And it's our duty as a, as a school um, and as teachers and, uh, teachers and as school leaders to make sure that we understand how students are feeling, because this will affect their learning significantly. Um, so the past test, um, or test the past survey and the questionnaire gives us a really good indication of their levels um, and their attitude. Next slide, please, Mary. So this slide, hopefully you can see it, is, um, is a work in progress document. Um, it will be communicated with all, all of you um, at the start of the next academic year. And what this is, is it's a one page document to help parents plot out um, and to understand 
when things will happen um, in year seven and in the secondary school. So again, there's lots of things in there that are still to be confirmed at this stage, of course, but I just wanted to, to refer you to this, this um, template, if you like, or this, this um, assessment overview. So when you do receive it, you will be familiar with it. Um, it looks at different progress checks. So we have four different checks uh, in secondary school throughout the academic year, um, all the way up until the end of the year where the, the parents and the students receive a, a very comprehensive school report. Um, we're going to be, uh, again, depending on the situation in September, giving you the opportunity to come into our school and to meet our tutors and to meet our teachers. Um, we will be holding what are called intervention meetings, but that's for our older students. Obviously, we'll have the teacher parent conferences. Um, and then there's some um, information that you may or may not uh, choose to look at, obviously, because it involves your 10 and 11, but it gives you an idea of the timeframes um, when we're assessing students um, in the older years um, for their GCSEs and for their A-levels. And it's a good insight for you to, um, to look at for the future. Next slide, please, Mary. OK, I think at this stage I'm going to hand over to Miss Gabby. Just before I do hand over to Miss Gabby, I am. Um, it's a real a real pleasure to um, see so many people in this webinar this afternoon. Um, obviously, I can't see you visually, but I can see the numbers coming through. There's, there's a lot of year six parents in this webinar and that really um, excites me because um, it shows that you're, you're, you're keen, you're enthusiastic, you're determined to help us with your child's transition into year seven. Um, again, I can't reiterate in, in this very, very unusual um, and unprecedented time. So it's our aim, it's Miss Gabby's aim, it's Miss Hannah Monk's aim as a, as a, as a team and Miss Gertrude's aim, of course, to help your child in the coming weeks throughout the summer um, so that when we do return to normality eventually, um, your child will feel comfortable, as comfortable as possible um, when they join our secondary school. So now I'm going to hand over. I want to wish you all the very best. So please stay in good health with you and your families. Um, and I look forward to meeting you in person when that time comes in the near future. Thank you. Hi everybody, um, so I will be um, your child head of year, um, but before we begin I just want to start by um, echoing what Miss Ian said in terms of hoping your family and your friends are all safe and well at the moment, um, considering the current situation that we are experiencing. Okay. Um, next slide please Mary. OK, so I'm going to start off by just um, explaining through um, our expectations of the students. So um, it's really important that our students know what is expected of them and as well that you know what is expected of your child when they come into school. Um, so the first thing is attendance. Um, this is crucially important. If your child is not in school, then it will mean that they could potentially fall behind and that could therefore have ongoing impacts on their education. So we find attendance is crucial even at the early stage of year seven into the secondary school. Um, if your child is ill and cannot come to school, please make sure that you follow the correct procedures so that your child is marked as they should be. Um, yeah. So moving on to punctuality, um, it's really, really important that your child is also arriving into school on time. We only have 10 minutes of form time in the morning, which I'll come to again in a minute. Um, but if your child is later than 10 minutes, that means they are going to miss essentially less than time. That could have a huge impact on their attainment and their progress um, throughout the whole year, especially if they're late um, the majority of the time. So it's crucial that you are getting your child to school on time. Um, if you drop them off and if they get the bus, then please make sure that you are putting them on the bus at the correct time too. Um, moving on to uniform. Um, uniform should be to the high standard. Um, that means that the child should have their shirt tucked in, that they should have their top buttons done up, they should be wearing ties and scarves. Um, and especially we find this one with the boys, 
um, that they need to have black shoes and not trainers. And um, that's really important. Um, just so that we have um, everybody in the school as equal. Um, behaviour. I don't think I need to touch on this too much because after um, speaking to some of the year six teachers, um, I've seen that behaviour is actually really good in year six. Um, however, I just want to reiterate the point that we do expect behaviour to be to a high standard um, and we have high expectations of our students. And if our, we're not experiencing that, then we will be involving you in the process. So just to make you aware that we expect excellent behaviour all the time from all of our students. We are really lucky to have a school that has high levels of effort and enthusiasm and um, all through the school. We experienced um, students being really, really enthusiastic about their teachers, about their learning and about what they're doing day to day. And we hope that your year six students and the children will come up into the secondary school and have that same level of effort and enthusiasm, as I'm sure they will, because um, after speaking to a few of them this week, uh, I've seen how enthusiastic they can be. But I just want to reiterate that point. And finally, um, home learning and independence. I think this period of distance learning has caused um, a lot of the year sixes to be more independent about creating their own work and being on top of their workload. Um, but in the secondary school, we do expect students to be initiating their own home learning and independently completing it. Um, so even though you might want to get involved, it's important that your child does complete that work on their own and to the best of their own ability. Um, yeah, OK, next slide, please, Mary. OK, so support at school. Um, your child will most likely come up in the class that they are already in. So if your child is in 6A, the likelihood is that they will move up and be into 7A next year. Sometimes um, that might not always be the case. We might need to shuffle things around a little bit. But for the majority of students, they will remain in the same class. So that will be their form class. They will be in form together. However, in the secondary school, we do move around um, the school. So, for example, they might have maths in one area of the school and then we have English in another area of the school. So it's really, really important um, that the students are aware of this, that they will be moving around the school um, in between lessons. And um, they normally have about a two or three minute layover. Um, to allow them to get the lessons on time and teachers are aware of um, the movement around. Um, also, just touching on lessons um, next week, um, start from Sunday, myself and Miss Hannah will be sharing taster lessons um, for your child. So every day at about 9.40 to 10 past 10, we will be sharing taster lessons. There will be two or three every day for them to be completing. And the tasks are only aimed to last for about 10 minutes. Um, they don't have to be completed during that time. They can be completed whenever the students get a chance to um, around their normal work. But that is being provided. And this is just to give them an idea of what lessons may be like during the secondary school and how um, that level is upped um, moving up a year group. Um, for this, we're going to create a Padlet for your students and they will then be able to upload any work that they complete to this Padlet. Um, so that link will be shared tomorrow or in the next week when we get there. Um, That's it. Uh, yeah, OK, um, so just to say a huge thank you for your attendance today and um, we hope you found this session helpful and worthwhile. Any questions, I will email out a Padlet to all of you and um, please just ask your questions on the Padlet and we will collate them on there and we will answer any questions on there um, for you. So please just wait till tomorrow. We'll send the Padlet link out and then we will address any questions tomorrow. Thank you all for coming and um, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Miss Gabby. I think I'm live. Good. So I'll just say a few closing words, um, obviously on, on behalf of the team as well, um, and just reiterate what Miss Gabby said about um, your presence today is, is very much valued. It's a very, very stressful time for us all um, as teachers, as parents, and, and obviously most importantly, our students are going through a very, very difficult time um, not just in this school, but, but around the world. And it's really important for me to, to make it clear that we are here to help you. 
um, the well-being of your child is absolutely central to everything that we do um, and we need to work together as parents and as teachers to make sure that we, we help our young people um, in this transition. The one really good thing about this is that your child will be familiar with our school building um, they will feel part of the school already, part of the secondary school, because they interact with us and they have interacted with us over the past year um, or beyond, um, or before that, sorry. Um, so actually that's a big advantage of all working together sort of in, in harmony in the same school. Um, I, I cast my mind back a little bit to when I was transitioning from year six to seven, and I'm sure you can remember your transition as parents, um, as students, sorry, um, when you were in year six to seven. And often the case is that you're moving to school, you're moving to a new building, you're moving to absolute unfamiliar territory, um, so to speak. But we are here together as a community. I want to emphasize that. Um, we want to keep collaborating. We're gonna do more of these sessions. This was actually our very first session. I think our very first live webinar that we've ever done at GFS. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, and you should be too, because you're our very first uh, participants of a live webinar. Wishing you all the best once again. Please have a wonderful evening. Look after your, your children, um, our students, for the remainder of this academic year. And um, I can't, like I said one more time, I cannot wait to meet you all uh, when we return to normality. Thank you so much and bye-bye.